What's your name first? Simon Rassiopa. You are the... I'm the showrunner executive producer okay. of The Boys Diabolical. Awesome, thank you. I love the show. Oh, thank you. <laughs> thank you so much. This is very kind. Yeah, yeah. thanks. Thank you. Tell me about the... Um, um, you know, how do you guys decide on... Because uh, there's some anime, there's some of it like old classic animation style, some of it old Looney Tunes kind of style. Yeah. How do you guys decide on which style to uh, have? So, on, a, uh, so some of the stories, some of the scripts when we started working on them had a real natural flavor. Like, the, like Laser Baby's Day Out was always going to be a Looney Tunes <laughs> episode. We knew that when we started writing that with Seth and Evan. Uh, that's what that was going to be from the very start. Uh, you know, Justin Roiland's episode, we knew was going to be a Rick and Morty kind of styled episode. We knew that from the very start. Some of the others, we waited until the script kind of came together, and then we started talking about what style mm. suited the material. Interesting. So we always found, we always tried to find the style that worked best with the script, with the idea, with what we were trying to communicate, basically. Mm. Is there like an animation style that you haven't done yet that you would love, like, like a specific <laughs> famous animator or something that you would kind of... Yeah, well, I mean, like, uh, I mean, like, Gendy's stuff, Gendy Tartakovsky's stuff is incredible. We didn't do any CG at all in the first season. We just didn't have the time. We only had, like, ten months. I mean, there's little CG elements in parts of it, but we didn't do a CG episode. Uh, you know, it would be great to do something like a, like a 70s style, like, Saturday morning show, like the C-Lab kind of stuff. That would be great to do, like, Johnny Quest kind of style. So, I mean, like, there's tons of stuff we haven't done. Then you can even get into, like, specific directors who have their own styles, like Sylvester. May, Leather Valley, you know, Pete Candland, like people who have those kind of stuff. So we could do that, you know, if you're going forward. So, so lot, there's lots of territory untouched, is I guess what I'm trying to say. I'm, I'm, so how much, I'm sorry. Oh, go ahead. No, go ahead. So how much liberty do you have taking the concepts of the boys from live action to animation and how much do they allow you to push the envelope on it. Well, so Eric Kripke, who created The Boys, uh, and is the showrunner, on the, on the, we call it the Mothership Show, the, the main <laughs> series, uh, was obviously a big part of Diabolical. He was in every meeting. He was on there all the time. And he was the one who was always like, go as far as you can. Just like, he would keep on pushing us to go like, he's like, I think this can be bloodier. I think this can be more graphic. <laughs> I think, and we're like, yes, you're right. Of course you, of course. So he was instrumental in letting us go as far as we could and, and trying to get us to push further on the scripts, on the acting, on the material, on the animation. So, uh, yeah, he was a huge part of that. And Amazon Studios, of course, was great and, and almost never saying no. And just being like, oh, you want it? Okay, sure. Let's let's do it. Why not? Two questions. Uh, season two, mm -hmm. that's the first question. And the second question is, the Andy Samberg, uh, the, the one that he wrote, um, I don't know if you've seen, you know, they have people who do reaction videos on, on YouTube. Mm -hmm. Have you seen some of those reaction no, videos? No, are there some for that episode? Oh, 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 you have to watch them because um, this one woman, she she was in tears. She literally was in tears and she kept trying to, and then her, her friend, her, her guy friend was more like, yeah, I'm, I, I'm not crying, you're crying. You're, you know, so, so, so the question is, Andy Samberg, that is so incredibly anti against, you know, type there but it was a beautiful absolutely beautiful episode yeah How did you get that out of it <laughs> <laughs> well so he so any sandberg uh obviously people know him from like uh, Saturday Night Live, Lonely Island, you know, obviously he's acting and some of his writing career. But he's also, he loves short films and he loves film. So he's written a, a lot of other stuff. I'm not sure how much of it is produced or not produced. Uh, so it's when you start to meet him or work with him, it's actually not out of character at all, which is amazing. It was, it was a surprise to me too at the time. Um, so that episode, the nicest thing is he came in with this really strong idea about doing it about cancer and about loss mm -hmm. and about the idea that maybe there's natural things in life that you push against, but there that's okay they're natural things that should just happen uh, and then we brought on uh, Giancarlo who's uh, our supervising director he brought on this other director named Steve Ahn who's Korean and he had a personal uh, response to it because uh, I think he had had a similar not obviously like what happened in the show but he had a he had a cancer loss in his family uh, so he's like, I find this really personal. I'd love to do it, and I'd like to make it Korean. I'd like to have it shift that way. Uh, and obviously, I'm not Korean. Uh, Andy Samberg's not Korean. Giancarlo's not Korean. But we were like, that sounds incredible. We will support you as much as, as we can, and we will help you. But you have to lead that because you are Korean. So we try to support that by... Uh, hiring Korean actors, but we have a Korean studio for that animation studio. We have Korean designers. We have we hired a Korean composer. It had the uh, feel to it. I mean, it obviously had the feel to it. Yeah. yeah, and that and then so that I'm very happy with the way that one came out. But it was this huge collaborative process that started with Andy and then went through Steve and 
uh, Haisu Weidman, who is our composer, uh, and it just came together in a way that it's, I feel really lucky that that's, that, it worked out that way, it worked out that well. Season two. Oh, season two. Well, listen, watch more. <laughs> watch it again. Uh, Amazon has not given me uh, green light for season two yet. Wow. Uh, fingers crossed. Uh, so uh, break into other people's houses, turn it on their televisions <laughs> if you can. I'd appreciate that. Uh, hopefully, I would love to do a season two. Okay. Uh, but we're still waiting for you know to hear that. But yeah. And also, oh sorry, no. The, the, the decision of um, that episode where Hughie is the Hughie that's on the comic book pages. Yes. No, because we're so used to, um, I'm sorry, I forget his name. Uh, oh, Garth Ennis, or, yeah. or Eric Kripke, you mean? The, the, the one who played Hughie in the live action series. Oh, um, yeah. uh, uh, Hugh, uh, uh, Quaid, Quaid, Jack Quaid, Quaid, Jack yeah. Quaid, yes. So why go to that direction instead of uh, Oh, well, we're to that direction because that episode is Garth Ennis' episode. So oh, Garth Ennis is, okay. created the comic book version of The Boys, and we, he was one of the first people we went to for Diabolic because we were like, let's do the Garth version. They, I'm pretty sure this was Kripke's idea, idea, and we're like, yeah, that sounds amazing. So we went to... Garth Ennis, and he wrote us that episode, and then we're like, well, it has to be Simon Pegg playing Hugh, because the character was always based <laughs> off Simon Pegg in the books. It was clearly, he wrote the foreword to a couple of the collections, so, and also Simon was a friend of the show, because he'd been on the Mothership show, so we just called him up, and he was like, are you kidding? Absolutely, I will do that. Nice. So he was like, he was, it wasn't even a question, we just went to him, and he was like, yes, and then we did it. Now, going off of, um, as, as a comic book nerd, first and foremost, you know, some of the characters on the, sh the show and, and the animated show are from directly from the comics, but the one I can think of is Groundhog, mm -hmm. who has changed completely from the comic character. Was that like a, yeah, do whatever, or did you have kind of a vision and you're like, this is the perfect character to slide into that thing? Uh, so that was Aisha Tyler's episode, and Aisha Tyler, uh, if you've talked to her, she's amazing. She's like a deep cut comic book nerd in the best possible way. Like, I love her for that. And she was like, so she, when she wanted to do a story about Nubian Prince and Nubia, she was like, I want to bring in some other characters from around that era. She did that research, and she's like, I really like Groundhog. And we're like, that sounds amazing. Let's bring Groundhog in. Uh, and it's her version of Groundhog, in the same way it's her version of Nubian Prince and Nubia and stuff, so we helped along with that. But that's, that's she just was like, I think he'd be great. And we're like, yes, he would be. And then we try to put in a couple of the lines from the comic books. He's always like, in the comics, he only says, Ghana. This is one. So we, there's, we cheat that. We put that into the episode. But we, we needed to be a bit more of a character for her episode. So. Let's take that the last one. Okay, because I'm going to start. All right. Thank no. you. Guys, thank you so much. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, thank you. Appreciate it. Didn't get to work it um, this season. If there's future seasons like animation style, actor, something you just love to get involved with. Oh, man. That's a good question. I mean, there's probably countless, uh, you know, gosh, I'm... I'm I'm trying to think if there's anyone specifically, you know, like, I don't know, maybe some Wu-Tang Clan guys or something, you know, like, that would be my selfish, like, you know, maybe some hip-hop artists that I like or something, but, you know, like, it, it was, um, it, it, like, obviously a really cool, like, um, uh, you know, collection of, of, of people that we got to work with, for sure. You know, what? So oh, good. Oh, yeah. sorry, you, no. you had so many different writers. Um, can you talk a little bit about the process? I mean, are you reaching out to some friends you already know, saying, hey, would this be cool? Did they hear about it and reach out to you? Or is it something, you know, kind of less cool than that? <laughs> well, are you specifically, specifically talking about the writers? Writers, right. So the, directors, the, I mean. the writer side was um, a little bit more Seth, Evan, and Eric sort of like reaching out to their friends, you know? Okay. Like, so that's where you're getting like uh, Aisha Tyler writing one and Aquafina and the Glazers and stuff like that. On the directing side, that was a little bit more me reaching out to just friends that I know that um, could do the job. And also, you know, on all of these projects, there's a little bit of like, we need to find someone and everyone's busy. So, you know, there's a couple of people that I met for the first time on this show. But yeah, drawing from my kind of, uh, I've been doing this almost 25 years now. So, so I know people. <laughs> <laughs> if there is a season two, could any of the uh, episodes in season two be a continuation of some of the stories of the season one? Like uh, the, the, the kids who were murdered their parents. You know? <laughs> right, right. <laughs> I guess they follow up on that. What do you think? Or is it going to be fresh I, I stories? Would certainly, I mean, yeah, I would... Like, I wouldn't mind telling the further adventures on all eight of them. Like, I think there's a way to do that. Yeah. You know, especially that one, because, like, Ghost survives, you know? <laughs> yeah. The narrator also survives. So, you know, I don't know if it's Ghost and the narrator uh, uh, hanging out or doing something. Um, I also thought it was kind of interesting that Homelander looked a little, uh, you know, uh, upset that he couldn't kill Ghost. So, yes. you know, there's a little animosity there. Um, 
but yeah, you know, like like that would be fun. I think I could also see if we were to do a season two that we'd completely wipe the slate and do you know eight or or more or <laughs> completely original things. So I, I'm sort of waiting to see what everyone wants to do. But I, I think if I had a vote, I'd definitely revisit yes. at least some of them. <laughs> now, you've worked on a lot of different projects in your life. Is there is there one that if you could somehow sneak that project into like a boys style episode. Uh, that's funny. <laughs> okay, now I have to sort of think of like I mean gosh, I can almost see like a boys take on everything that I've done, <laughs> you know. <laughs> like, you know, if there was like a a, a really evil uh, avatar, you know, <laughs> that kind of uses blood bending to uh, mutilate people, that would that would be the, probably the boys diabolical version of that. But then also, you know, Star versus Forces of Evil was a really like wackier um, uh, uh, show that I directed for Disney and, and I, I see uh, bits of that in the you know Ariel uh, uh, Sky you know uh, um, uh, BFS episode so you know that sort of reminds me of like a star episode gone, gone horribly wrong <laughs> well you know what, I asked him about you know the, the one that Andy uh, Samberg wrote right and because you know because I don't know if you guys uh, know that there's a really huge reaction online about that one. I've seen, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, uh, what, as I told him, uh, one of the women, I mean, she literally, she was just in tears as she was talking about it. Oh, my gosh. Like a YouTube review or something? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. And oh. it's, it's, so, but I mean, it's just that powerful. And all these things are just that powerful. Did you guys realize that, I mean, you know, when you create stuff, you always, you always assume that there's a certain power to it. But did you realize, I mean, that that sort of massive effect because people are just talking about this like crazy it's a tricky thing I mean like if if I had if any one of us had that much control over what we do we would have made all eight episodes that powerful you know we would have I would have done that my entire career and I'd probably be a lot richer you know for it but um, it, there's it's 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 almost like tweeting in a weird way where like you tweet one thing and, and no one likes it and or, re, or reply it, and then you post one it just resonates and goes viral viral and, and everyone and I, I really felt like that one just landed like in a way that we, we almost couldn't have seen I mean it obviously it, it, it was crafted to be emotional and you know a, a more like special episode but um, man there's something about just the way it was manifested and the way Steve directed it and the way it was voice acted and, and um, you know I, I get teary eyed and you know like I worked on it you know it's one of those things where you're, you're editing the episode and I'm kind of like you know like you, you get a lump in your throat so it's just really cool episode was that the plan from the start to have maybe one that's a little bit more kind of humorous and one that's a little bit more emotional one that's a little bit more action or it's really interesting because as I understand it they had reached out to the writer celebrity writers and said what would you come up with and it just breaks happens to break down that about half of them are funny and half of them are more dramatic. You know, there's, there's a little that are a, a, a bit of both. Um, I'm assuming that when they reached out to Andy Samberg, they were like, oh, he'll do a, a, a wacky one for us. Yeah. But um, he had expressed that, you know, he, he really wanted to do something dramatic. And, and uh, I, I feel for him because you know, I, I think, you know, as, as a fellow creator, uh, it's easy to get typecast, you know, and he, he just wanted to do something um, emotional and dramatic. And there's, there's barely a joke in the whole thing. And, you know, he, he did an amazing job. One thing that we brought up in the last comment was the fact that Amazon, Amazon allowing you guys to pretty much do, it sounds like, whatever you wanted. Right. <laughs> How freeing is it to work with a company that's allowing you to do that, where a lot of them just, like, will pull back the right? No, you can't do that, you can't do this, you can't do that. I'm so thankful. I mean, I've been oftentimes the guy in the back of the room at, at animation studios going guys can we please not dumb this down can we not talk too talk down to the viewers um i'm always trying to age it up or mature it up and make it just a little bit more smarter a little bit more sophisticated um and this is almost like a completely extreme the other way where it's just like anything you want anything you know <laughs> and if anything we probably might have gotten uh, notes had we not pushed it far enough. Mm -hmm. So uh, it was very freeing, in some ways a little intimidating though, because it's like, um, you know, I think sometimes being in that comfort zone of like, well, clearly we can't show a character, uh, you know, this is in, in children's entertainment, we can't show a character smoking, we can't show a character, you can't show blood or gore, we can't show nudity. Um, now that we can, <laughs> um, how much, you know? 
How, like, how much is crossing the line? How much is entertaining? How much is, is you know, at a point where you go, oh, I can't look at this anymore. Um, so that was, you know, challenging. If, if you had your compound V and you could get any superpower to help you work on these shows, so what would it be? Uh, to help me work on these shows? Yeah. Oh, man. So it, it would be like... It, it, almost like a like a, a Harry Potter style like stylist that just draws for me, you know. So, so I could just be sitting there like watching, but no, no, a little more. No, I didn't even have to direct it, you know. Like, just someone else do it. Like I, I think I actually love to draw, but but I think uh, the, the nature of this pro of this uh, business is. It's like get a thousand drawings done by the end of this week and then be fresh for next week to do that again. So it's, it's like it could get uh, tiring. So I could use a little compound V help there. <laughs> Thanks, guys. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you Thanks, so much. Everyone. Thank Appreciate you. It. Yeah. Thank you.